All right, we are almost done with our first composite image in Photoshop. So the last things we're going to need to do are crop the picture to the right size, and then we're gonna add some texture overlays, which really help polish the picture and make it look like art. So we have our four main groups. We have the sky, has all these adjustment layers in it as well. Then we have Krista driving, we have Krista outside. And then we have our rain effects that we just worked on. So let's go ahead and crop the picture. I wanna do a one by one. And we're also gonna rotate it a little bit, just cause I think it's kinda cool. Try to bring it in. Let's see, I want to bring it out here a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I think it should be a little closer on her. Okay, so there we go. Let's accept the crop. And now we're going to add some textures. So in the download file, I want you to open that up. We'll open all the textures. So I'll open them up here. These are all black and white images of my office. <laughs> so I have a concrete floor in my office that is conveniently very dirty. I have a fabric backdrop right here that I took this picture of. And I have a cork board. That's another one of the fabric. That's my table. So as you can tell, this is really easy to do. I really want you to add texture overlays to the image that you create on your own. And it's so easy to take these pictures like I just did. This took me five minutes and I literally just did it and brought them in on my computer. I turned them black and white and I also turned the contrast down a little bit on the pictures because when they're as overlays, you don't need harsh contrast and you don't usually want it. It's, it's not supposed to be super noticeable. It's just supposed to be a nice touch. So the first overlay I'm gonna add I think is this one. So I'll drag that over to my composition. I'm going to make a folder for my overlays. Make sure this is in the folder. Scale down this to fit over the image. And what I want to do is have, I'm going to flip it. Remember if I hold down shift when I'm flipping, or when I'm rotating an image, it will go by 15 degree increments. Because I want to, this to act sort of as a vignette coming from this side of the picture, so that this is lighter, this is where Krista is, or her the outside picture of her is. And then this is where her driving is. So if I accept this, then I set it to overlay. Turn it on and off. You see how it kind of adds a nice little vignette to the picture? Um, you know what though? It's adding like the lines, which is cool, but it kind of looks like we took this picture through a screen door or something. So let's do this. We'll go to filter, blur, we'll do a motion blur. This blur is more directional. And so it will probably help get rid of the lines that I don't want to be seeing. We'll do it like a 45, 50 degree angle because the lines go like this. So if I do a 50 degree angle on the blur, it should kind of cancel them out. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'll zoom in here, turn it on and off. Yeah, so now it's just acting like a nice little vignette. I could go add a new layer, go to my gradient tool my radial gradient, choose the transparent and black option and draw a circle to make a, to make like a little vignette over my image. But those usually end up looking a little too perfect and a little fake for my taste. So I like doing this. So I'll bring the opacity of this little vignette down a little bit. What I do is I'll usually add like four or five textures at fifth or at like a 15% opacity. 
instead of just like one more noticeable texture. So next let's do, I love this, let's do this. Bring it in here, scale it down to fit the picture. And then we'll place it like this. Again, we'll go to overlay. You know what, we might try, let's do soft light for this one. For this, let's go to like, yeah. You know what, overlay I think is better. And then bring the opacity down because it's adding cool contrast because I don't want this to be too light. I'll turn it on and off and see where I have any noticeable changes. This little grunge thing, sometimes that can be cool. I'm not in love with it right now. So I'll just, on my layer, use the blur tool. And blur this little grungy thing that I was seeing there. And now it's not too distracting. Okay, I'll bring this into my overlays and I'll exit out of that. Now I'll probably add two more. You know, let's go with the cork board. Oops. Move that into my composition, scale it down again. Set that and we'll place it just like this. Now for the blend mode, I probably wanna do something a little more subtle for this one, like soft light, cause that's still like too strong. But see how it kind of makes it look like a photograph? That's why I like using these. If I did like uh, overlay, it would be even stronger. We'll go to soft light. Bring the opacity way down. We might do like, actually, I'm, it kind of looks cool when you can't really tell that there's a texture. That's where I like to leave it usually. Remember that in the soft light blend mode, Anything above 50% gray, anything darker than 50% gray will become even darker and anything lighter will be seen as lighter. So it just adds contrast to the image. So I think like 12% for this one will be good. Yeah, I see it especially like in the sky here. Adds little flex, it looks great. Okay, now see this one is a might be a little too much but we'll see if it looks good on the picture so as you can see I'm just kind of playing with these seeing what looks good using what I want not using what I don't want <laughs> let's do that we'll go to overlay for this Bring it down, just slowly bring it back up until I start noticing it. And then go down a few more percentage points from there. Turn it on and off. Good, I like that. I might even, let's see, maybe a soft light. Be a little more subtle for this one. Then I can bring the opacity up a little more. Yeah. Great, let's see what else we have. This is a picture just of my table. 
It's really boring, but it has a great vignette. So we'll bring that in and exaggerate that vignette around the car even more to just make it noticeable that we want this side to be dark and this side to be light. Let's go do that. Go to soft light, maybe overlay. Yeah, overlay is more dramatic. Great, so I like how it's darkening this side, but it's lightening this side too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a layer mask to this with a big brush in black. I'm just gonna paint it out a bit. Now you can see my layer mask looks like this. Again, it's, a, it's like adding a fake vignette, but it doesn't look fake. So you can see all my textures off and on. I think I'm lightening her face a little too much. So let's see what I can do to bring that down. This one's lightening it a little too much, so we'll change this blend mode to soft light. And this one, uh, this one's doing the same. Yeah, I don't want to change the blend mode because I like the effect. So I'll add a mask. And I'll just paint it out right on her face. There. Now it's affecting everything else, but not her. It's not the most precise mask in the world, but it works. Okay, another thing I want to do is I want to kind of get rid of the color vibrance here because I want it to kind of become a little darker as we go to, um, more to the somber side of the image. So I will use a texture I'll use this texture and blur it. So bring in this image, scale it down so I get the full vignette effect. A vignette, if you don't know, is just a, usually like a lens will show some darkness and some blur in the corners of the frame of the picture. Um, and so it looks cool and a lot of people just try to recreate it. In Photoshop or Lightroom on their images. But a bad vignette or a too strong of a vignette is one sure sign of an amateur photographer in my opinion. Let's go to, let's do that motion blur again. Okay, go with this, and now we'll set the overlay. Let's bring it just above the sky. We'll set the overlay to hue. Actually, we'll go with saturation. And then we're gonna add a layer mask to it. And the layer mask is going to be a gradient. So all we have to do is click on our gradient tool right here, go to linear gradient and make sure it's set to black and white. And then when you click and drag across here with your layer mask selected, it'll add that gradient to your mask and then you get a nice smooth transition. We wanna do the opposite of this. So I'll have to start here with the gradient tool and work it this way. And now we see there's color here and then the color dissipates as it gets to this area. Let's bring down the opacity of this whole mask, or of this whole layer, because I don't want it to like be super noticeably taking away color, just a little bit, like that. Okay, now we're ready to make a couple of global adjustments, or adjustments to our entire image. So let's go to Adjustments. Let's start with Curves. This is above every layer. 
So it's going to affect the entire image. But we want to add a little bit of contrast to the image and bring down the shadows, bring up the highlights. Remember that's an S curve, which adds contrast. And you definitely don't want to go overboard with your contrast effects because that, again, it kind of makes it look like a iPhone filter or something like that. And it just, it doesn't look as slick in my opinion. Let's go to vibrance and add some vibrance to the overall image. I love colorful pictures. I think it looks great. It makes me happy. So that's what I like to make. So we'll bring it up maybe 25. And then this is a little too vibrant. So on my vibrance layer mask, again, I'll paint black over this. It was just right on her skin in the car. If I turn the layer mask off, it's kind of making it look like green or something in there. So I'll just paint out that vibrance. Go to my layer mask and just paint out all this extra stuff. And that is our image. So you've just finished your first composite in Photoshop. Uh, go back to the previous lessons if you missed anything or want to review anything. And then let's, as our very last step, export this. So click on File, Export, Export As. Here at the top under file settings, we can choose what file type we would like to save it as. We want to do JPEG. We have the option to scale it up here if we'd like to, um, but I don't want to change anything else. So we'll just keep everything as it is and go export. We'll save this as summer drive, click save. And now you have finished your first composite in Photoshop.